All right, welcome to the last unit of our course. Yes, it's unit eight, where we're going to apply all the things we learned about integrals. So one of the applications today is to talk about something called the average value of the function, and also the accumulation of rate functions. So we'll talk about that in a moment. But this whole thing about average value, okay, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I'm going to ask you to discover this formula yourself. But think about how you even talk about your like average marks, okay, in class. How do we find the average mark? Well, you're thinking, I'm going to sum up all my test scores or something like that and divide by how many tests you have, if they're all uh, out of the same score. Yeah, so think about that and keep that idea in mind as we try to discover the formula for the average value of a function, okay? Now, the average value of a function really just represents the average height of the function over an interval. So if you look at the interval from x equals to a and x equals to b, here's my function. What do you think would be like the average height? Just take a guess. And that guess will be that horizontal line segment that you draw, okay? Because that's going to represent the average height. So I'm thinking, hmm, highest, lowest, maybe the average is right here. So maybe I'm going to call this line here. And I'm going to call that f uh, subscript av, or f average. Okay, so I don't know if that's right or not, but I'm just going to assume that that is the approximate average height of the function f of x on this interval from a to b. Okay, now what we want to do first is find the area of the rectangle that's formed. So that's this area that I'm shading in right now in blue. Okay, well the area of all of course is just the width times the height, and the width here would be the distance, yeah, b minus a. Okay. And the height, of course, in this case, would be the average height. Now, here's the key point. Okay, and I want you to write this down. The area of the rectangle that I just drew is equal to the area under the curve. Okay from A to B, right? And that's the case if we want to figure out the average height. So translating that statement into symbols is what we get in point number three here. Well, the area under the curve is just the integral from A to B of f of x dx. And the area of the rectangle is just this thing on the right-hand side, B minus A times height. So if I want to solve for the average value or the height then what I need to do is divide both sides by, that's right, b minus a. So the integral from a to b of f of x dx divided by b minus a must be the actual height. And remember that height is really just my average value. So that gives rise to our average value of a function formula. The average value of f of x on the integral from a to b can be denoted as this value of f of c, or if you just want to write down f average, that's fine. And it's equal to, yes, it's the area of the region divided by the width of the region. Now, remember how I told you earlier how this relates to the sum of all your marks? Think about it. The sum of all your marks. That would be like the integral. Divided by how many marks you have. That is like the width. And that finds the average. All right? Now, some people don't like writing the formula like this. They like to take out the b minus a in the denominator and put it in front. Why can they do that? Well, of course, that's just a constant. So they like doing that, a constant multiplied by the definite integral. And that works as well. Okay, key thing here, make sure you know that f of x must be continuous on the interval from a to b. Okay, so using our lovely formula now, can you find the average value of this function? x cubed minus x on the interval from 0 to 2 without using a calculator. So just quickly apply the formula f average equals to 1 over b minus a, and b is 2, a is 0. And we're going to integrate this from 0 to 2 of the function x cubed minus x dx. Don't forget your proper notation. And then we can do this by hand. The antiderivative of x cubed is x to the power of 4 over 4. The antiderivative of x is x squared over 2. I'm going to evaluate this from 2 to 0. So we'll plug it in. We get 1, oops, 2 to the power of 4. That's what 
16, right? Yeah, so 16 over 4 minus uh, 2 squared is 4 over 2 is 2 minus 0 minus 0. I love 0. And then you get 4 minus 2 is 2. A half times a 2 is just the number 1. So in this case, notice that if I were to draw in the height here of 1, the rectangle that I've shaded in here is equivalent to the area of this part with the area of this part put together. Okay? Now, example number 5 says, can you use your calculator to find the value of C in the interval where F of C, which is the average value found in example number 4, is equal to that? So really what I'm saying now is, look, 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 I want you to figure out this point right here, this value of C, and I know it's going to be between 1 and 2, so how do I want to do this? Well, this is where you make your average value equal to your f of x expression. So 1 equals x cubed minus x, x cubed minus x minus 1 equals to 0, and uh-oh! Unfortunately, you cannot factor this, so go to your graphing calculator and figure it out. So I'll bring out mine right now. Hopefully you can bring out yours as well. Hello? I asked for mine to come out. Oh, that's not fun. Oh, it's coming. It's just slow. So here you can graph it out. You can use Newton's method, whatever you wish. I'm just going to quickly graph this out. Do I have two graphing calculators here? Whoa, trippy. We just need one, right? x cubed minus x minus 1. I will zoom standard. We're looking for the interval between 0 and 2. Ooh, what happened? What did I do wrong? <gasps> I forgot the cube. We're only looking for the interval between 0 and 2 anyways, right? So, look, this is only 1, 0. There's my left bound. Let's move to the right. Pass the zero. Give it a guess. And voila. X equals to 1.325. Remember AP? Three decimal places for all decimal answers. Okay? So therefore you can say C actually. Okay? Or you can say C equals to 1.325. If you did C, then you would change all the X values here to C. C, 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 C. All right. That's average value, okay? So our next topic in this lesson is this thing called accumulation of rate functions. We did something like this before in lesson 4.1 where we interpreted rate function models. Now we're going to talk about that too, but we're going to talk about the concept of accumulation. So what is the accumulation of a rate? What is the sum or the accumulation of the area underneath the curve? So here's our example here. It says the graph at the right models the rate of rainfall in inches per hour from midnight till 6 a.m. during a tropical rainstorm. Notice rate of rainfall. Okay. So in part six here it says, can you write a complete sentence to explain what point A represents? Okay. So point A, what does that represent here? Well, we have an x value of three. So I guess that means time. So it's at, at 3 a.m. Okay. So what's going on at 3 a.m.? It's not the amount of rain, but yes, the rate of rainfall. So the rate of rainfall, or I'll say the rain is falling at, okay? So the rain is falling at, yes, a rate of one, and include the units, yes, in this case, inch per hour, okay? So that's what that point means. It's not a Y value of the amount, but it's actually a rate. And so if you answer number seven, what is the slope of the graph between points B and C? The slope is this slope. We can calculate that. That's the change in Y of the change in X. So the change in the Y value of the change in X. Change in Y seems to be negative one. X is also one, so that's negative one. Now what's our unit? Well, our Y value, the unit is inches per hour, and our X value is hours, so it's actually negative one inches per hour per hour or per hour squared. Okay, so the slope here represents the rate of a rate. So what does that mean then? Yeah, I just told you it's the rate of a rate, right? So 
between what two times? Well, between 4 and 5 a.m. That's what we're saying between points B and C. What's going on, though? We're saying the rate of rainfall, and because it's negative, I'll say is decreasing, but how fast, right? At a rate of one inch per hour per hour, or per hour squared, whichever you like, okay? So once again, the meaning here is the rate of rainfall, that's the variable, is decreasing, because we're talking about its rate, and it's decreasing at a rate of one inch per hour per hour. Okay, units matter. Now for number nine, we're talking about this definite integral. Okay, so what is the integral from three to five of R of t? Well, that's just that shaded area that I have in the diagram. So we can calculate by looking at it as a rectangle plus a triangle. So we have a rectangle that has height 4, um, width 1, and then we have a triangle, height 4, width 1, divided by 2. So 2, uh, oops, hey, 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 careful, why am I using 4? It's not 4, the height is actually 1. Oops, 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 what was I talking about? one one so one plus point five this is one point five now curious enough what are the units here remember this is area underneath the graph so if you think about our units along the y-axis that's inches per hour and we're looking at area which is shape so the x-axis is hours inches per hour multiplied by hours just gives us yeah inches so our units here are just 1.5 and it's in inches. So what does that mean then as a sentence explaining my answer to number 9? Well, between what hours? Yeah, between 3 and 5 a.m. What are we talking about here? It rained. Whoops. It rained a total of 1.5 inches. So this is the accumulation, and this accumulation occurs when I'm taking the rate and I'm multiplying it by time, right? Thinking about multiplying together area underneath the curve, area. And so I'm talking about an accumulation of rain during this time period of 1.5 inches, okay? Now, if I ask you to approximate then the area from zero to six of this function using geometric regions, um, I have a problem because look from 1 to 3 got this crazy curve but the easiest geometric region I can use to help approximate this and it's actually not too bad I think it's a pretty good approximation would be a rectangle of base 3 and height 1 so I'm going to quickly do that here approximate the value so make sure you use the approximation symbol I'd say 3 times 1 divided by 2, and then I'll add to that the rectangle and also the triangle. So 3 halves plus 1 and a half. I think that's 3. And once again, this is 3 inches. And so a complete sentence here is between the hours of, what, 0 to 6? So between 12 midnight and 6 a.m. I could say approximately, not equally, but approximately a p p r o x i m a t e l y. Approximately three inches of rain fell during this time. All right. So be careful with the units. Be careful with what we're talking about now with a rate graph. Remember, the slope would be the rate of a rate graph. The accumulation, though, tells you the actual quantity or the amount. All right? So keep that in mind. And I know this is always on the AP exam, so make sure you practice this stuff and get used to it. I see it quite often on the written and local choice parts of the exam. All right. Let's get to work, and we'll see you back here for Lesson 8.2.